Welcome everyone, this is Yasser Rosifi again from Learn Delta Series. Today we will discuss very nice light topic which is the glass aluminum cement as another model for direct to scalar restoration. First of all, I would like to declare that I don't receive compensation fees or royalties from the sales of any of the products shown or discussed. Also, I declare that I haven't any conflict of interest with any of the discussed products and techniques. Also, I would like to remind you that this presentation is copyright protected and will not be used or transmitted by any means without a prior written permission from me. Our objective today is to correlate between the different setting reaction stages of the material and the manipulative precautions and the instructions of it. Also, we would like to interpret the properties of glass animal material in terms of advantages and disadvantages. That's why we would like to assign a definite indications and contraindication according to these properties and according to these advantages and disadvantages. Also, we would like to differentiate the clinical use of different types of glass enumer and rationalize the cavity design and the manipulative procedures uh, for uh, the properties of this cement. Our topic will be classified into three major parts or will be discussed under three major parts. Part one is the material review. We would like to uh, know the material uh, in much more details to design uh, its cavity and to assign indications and the contraindications according to the advantages and disadvantages of the material. Then we will discuss the cavity preparation and final manipulation of the material. Let us start with the material review and having a quick review of the material history and the development. It all started in 1965 by uh, Wilson and Kent, who introduced, who are uh, British uh, chemists, who introduced uh, the silicate glass mixed with polyacrylic acid. Then, after four years, they synthesized a glass ionomer, okay. And in uh, 1971, they introduced the glass enomer to the market under the name of ASPA, as this name is the acronym of its ultra structure, which is aluminum silicate polyacrylate. After that, by one year, due to its adhesion to enamel and detail, and due to its fluoride release, it becomes widely uh, distributed and widely used in dental profession. In 1975, McLean was the first to develop clinical techniques to demonstrate the material resistance to a dental caries and introduced uh, much more indications for the material. In 1983, uh, improved abrasive resistance by adding silver by Simon, uh, which was called Miracle Max. In 1985, McLean and Geyser introduced glass thermite by sintering glass and metal powder. Early 90s, uh, resin modified glass alumar was introduced. Late 90s, highly viscous glass alumar cement. And in early uh, thousands, in early years of this millennium, nano felt glass alumar was introduced. And still, up to now, more and more advancement and modifications uh, for composite resin and glass alumar were developed in order to combine fluoride releasing and the anti nasty to the strength and the aesthetic of composite resin. Let us start to uh, clarify some terminologies and definition. As you define the glass ionomer as polyalkinoate cement, okay, as it's a polyacid liquid contains unsaturated double bond, that's why it is termed polyalkinoate cement. Term glass ionomer it is formed as it is formed of ionizable silicate glass powder and polyacrylic acid copolymer. That's why it is termed glass ionomer. But it could be defined chemically as a water-based material, which is formed as a product of an acid-based reaction between calcium fluoroalumin uh, calcium fluoroaluminum silicate glass powder with an aqueous solution of polyacid uh, compound. Okay, it is the most important definition and the most important terminology that uh, in which you could uh, build up and assign all our discussion today.
because it is a water-based material. What is meant by a water-based material? It is a material that precipitated from an aqueous reaction whose reaction medium is water. That's why it is termed the only true cement in density. Its composition it is composed of a powder of glass, glass powder, and polyacid liquid. Our glass powder composed of silica, alumina, aluminum fluoride, calcium fluoride, sodium fluoride, aluminum phosphate, erodium opacifiers, and fluoride as a ceramic flux. Okay, it is basically an acid soluble calcium, aluminum silicate glass containing fluoride. It is forming, formed by fusing silica and alumina, calcium fluoride, metal oxides, and metal phosphates at 1100 up to 1500 degrees centigrade then pouring the metal onto a, a metal plate and the glass form it is crushed, milled and the ground to form a powder of 20 up to 50 micron uh, size depending uh, on the use and the indication of the material. They get decomposed by acid during the uh, presence of aluminium ions which can easily enter the silica network enabling cement formation. Considering also the glass powder composition, the essential components in the skeleton of uh, crystallization or the pattern of crystallization of final glass enamel cement is the silica and the alumina. Also sodium, potassium, calcium and strontium are added in order to maintain electric neutrality between components, modify the cement properties, decrease the molecular weight of silicate structure, increase the reactivity of glass with polyacid. Considering especially phosphates and fluoride, they are added to decrease the melting temperature of the glass in the production process and incorporated into glass composition to modify the setting characteristics. But fluoride are not incorporated into the skeletal structure of glass, that's why it can diffuse freely in and out without disintegration of the material. This is an important information. Fluoride are added by the manufacturer to decrease the melting temperature and to make a homogeneous mixing between the components during manufacturing together with the phosphate. But, but fluoride is not incorporated into the skeletal structure of final glass so that it can diffuse freely in and out. It can diffuse freely in and out without disintegration of the material. This is an important information regarding the fluoride release of glass ionomer cement. Polyacid liquid composed of a group of polyacids, etaconic acid, maleic acid, tricarbalylic acid, tartaric acid, and 50% water. These acids are described as to be organic, ionomeric, carboxylic, and alkenoic. Organic because they are weak and contain hydroxyl group with high bond capacity, ionomeric because they are partially ionizable in aqueous media that increase its reactivity, carboxylic because it contains carboxyl group, alkenoic because it contains unsaturated double bond. These acids are maleic acid which reduce the moisture to sensitivity as it fastens the cross-linking and the hardening faster than the moisture to come in contact with your final product, etaconic acid that prevents gelation of the liquid, tricarbalylic acid, carbalylic acid reaction controller, and tartaric acid to increase the reactivity of the material. The cornerstone or the keystone in glass ionomer cement in its use, indication, and manipulative instruction is to understand its setting reaction. The setting reaction, which is called acid base reaction. It takes three phases. First phase is acid attack, second phase gelation or what is called the initial setting, and third phase is the maturation and the hardening, which is the final setting. Let us discuss the acid attack. Once we are mixing liquid and powder, okay, the acid will dissociate in aqueous media, okay, resulting in negatively charged carboxylate anions and positively charged hydrogen protons. The hydrogen 
ions will attack the surface of calcium aluminosilicate glass particles, releasing the cement forming metal ions of calcium and aluminum. Alum. This is uh, the water which attacks the liquids. Okay, sorry, uh, this is the aqueous solution of liquid. Okay, then it will be ionized into negatively charged and positively charged hydrogen ions. Okay, your hydrogen ions will attack uh, the calcium aluminosilicate glass. Okay, and it will be coated by this hydrogen at the same time as you are continuously in uh, a water or an aqueous media there will be a fast release of calcium and delayed or slow release of aluminium. Also, sodium and fluoride will be released. This is the first attack or the first phase, which is acid attack upon maxim. Then comes the gelation or initial set. The surface of glass power reacts with the acid or especially with the hydrogen of acid and it changes into silica hydrogen, okay? And inside the silica hydrogel, it is the surface layer of the glass powder that will react the acid, while the main glass core remains intact and exists as a filler in the final cement matrix. While calcium will react with the polycarboxylate anions, forming the first matrix, which is a water-soluble calcium uh, polysols, which is uh, responsible for the initial setting. At this stage, your ions are still in aqueous solution, means that they are susceptible to be washed away by moisture contamination, if it is contaminated by moisture, okay? And also, if it is dehydrated at this time, you will deny your setting reaction from the required aqueous uh, media, okay? And it will not mature or it will not reach the final uh, hardening, okay? That's why at this stage, Glass aluminum cement should not be subjected to finishing because it will lead to heat generation that will dehydrate the material and at the same time should not be subjected or exposed to moisture contamination that will lead to washing out of the formed ions, okay, and the material will not hard. That's why you shouldn't finish your restoration. You shouldn't, you should protect your restoration from exposure to moisture and it should be covered by a special varnish or a sealant or a bonding agent. This is the gelation phase. Again, your hydrogen attack, hydrogen ions attacks will create a silica hydrogel surrounding the core of glass particles, okay, which remains unreacted, okay, and this will form the first, lead to the, the formation of first matrix which is uh, the, the, the carboxyl group uh, reaction with the calcium ions forming calcium polysodium which is water soluble okay at this stage again if your material is subjected to extra moisture your so formed salts and at the same time your ions will be washed away including aluminium ions that are responsible for maturation of the material and if it is dehydrated due to early finishing and polishing and the heat generation of your uh, uh, handpiece or your uh, finishing tools, okay, then you will deny the material from the aqueous media that leads to continuous or continuity of ionization. Then, within 24 hours, with continuous ionization, and the presence of aqueous, uh, aqueous reaction medium, hydrogen ions will continually attack the silicate glass, okay, leading to much more release of aluminum ions, okay, that will react with the acid radical, forming water insoluble. This time it will be water insoluble, calcium aluminum carboxylate gel. And now the material will mature and harden and will no longer susceptible to hydration or to hyd or dehydration and could be finished after 24 hours at least. Then at this stage with continuous ionization, 
much more aluminium ions are released. These aluminium ions will react with uh, carboxyl group uh, from your acid, forming the second calcium, calcium aluminium polysalt matrix, which is water insoluble, and you could finish your material now. You could note that fluoride are released and sodium also ions are released which stay unstable and needs to be stabilized within your material. Again, this is the summary, okay? Ionization in aqueous solution of your liquid, okay, of your acid, resulting in negative, negatively charged carboxyl group and positively charged hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions attack your uh, glass particles, okay, leading to release of calcium ions in a very short time and slowly releasing aluminum ions, okay. At the same time, sodium and fluoride also are released. Then, okay, silica hydrogel is formed, okay, around your particles, okay, and then your calcium and carboxyl group are reacted with each other forming the first matrix which is calcium polysalt matrix which is water soluble this is called gelation phase and this uh, first matrix which is water soluble calcium uh, uh, polysalts is a very weak matrix and at the same time sensitive to moisture at this time, your material should be protected from hydration and dehydration. That's why you should protect it with a special varnish or a special sealant or at least bonding agent to protect it from uh, exposure to moisture. And at the same time, okay, should not be finished until it reaches full maturation. Okay. Then comes the maturation phase within 24 hours with continuous release of hydrogen ions due to still there is a water in your mix okay there will be continuous release of aluminium ions these aluminium ions will unite with uh, your carboxyl group of acids resulting in formation of second matrix which is hardy enough okay and get the strength of the material uh, build up okay this is the second calcium aluminium polysalt matrix which is water insoluble and at this time you are able to finish and polish your material now and it becomes no more longer sensitive to uh, moisture exposure okay but please note that still sodium and fluoride are released and we didn't use it within our structure okay or our uh, final setting structure and the crystallization then the final set and the hardened glass ionomer cement mass will be composed of unreacted remaining aluminum silicate glass surrounded by or coated with silica hydrogel okay and dispersed in a matrix of water insoluble calcium aluminum polysalts and sodium and fluoride ions remain in the ionized form and did not share in the crystalline structure or crystalline pattern of the material again you are mixing powder with liquid okay Upon mixing acid attack takes place, then it is within the liquid state, which is uh, termed gelation, okay, and equivalent to gelation, where the silica hydrogel formation and uh, water protection is required to prevent dissolution, and then finally, maturation within 24 hours, and the material becomes in a solid state, where insoluble matrix is uh, uh, is formed and water addition is required and preserved water okay to prevent dehydration of the material then this mixing time takes about from 45 to 60 seconds maximum working time would be about three to six minutes and the maturation will take at least 24 hours up to one that's why we could conclude that the role of water is very important because glass ionomer is a water-based cement that's why we term it as a true cement water it is the reaction media that allows dissociation of the polyacid liquid 
That's why it allows ionization and the release of metal salts that form the matrix, either calcium or aluminum, continuously ionize until maturation leads to or help ionization, okay? Act as a plasticizer during manipulation and allow cement to age with increased or building up of its strength, modulus of elasticity and the decreased plasticity. The final water content of the set cement it is about from 11 up to 24 percent let us go to discuss some properties of our material including nine items hydration and dehydration biocompatibility bonding to the two structure setting shrinkage wear and one of the most important properties uh, which is a unique character of this material compared to other restorative material is the fluoride releasing and the uptake not only releasing, it's also uptake of fluoride, aesthetic strength, and radiogastin. Regarding hydration and dehydration, if the material is hydrated, especially early, this will lead to dissolution, dissolution and washing away of uh, poly salts, loss of adhesive potential, decreased strength, loss of translucency, disintegration, and surface erosion. It will be a material of very low quality. That's why a waterproof seal is required and mandatory at the first 24 hours during the initial phases of setting reaction by application of a special sealer. If you don't have this special, uh, special sealer within your kit of glass ionomer, you could use cavity varnish or you could use the team bonding agent um, uh, used for bonding composite resin with the two structure. If it is subjected to dehydration, then surface micro cracks will take place increased obesity ability to staining due to these cracks poor aesthetic weakening respiration that's why early finishing should be avoided and these are the scanning electron microscope uh, scopic picture of both hydrated and dehydrated glass inverse cement resistance to black okay and pulp responses are the two uh, essential determinants of the biocompatibility of the material it is considered as a biocompatible material regarding to resistance to black because bacterial black first to thrive uh, on the surface of glass aluminum cement due to its fluoride contents and fluoride release. Also, the material is considered as biocompatible to the bulb tissues because its compositional poly, poly acids are weak acids. Okay, it has high molecular weights, limits its diffusion through the dental to use it toward, towards the bulb. Also, minimal temperature rise. Uh, when compared to other cements during its sitting uh, is also recalled. Let us discuss its bonding ability as an uh, unique property also of the glass ionomer cement, its bonding ability to tooth structure. Tooth structure composed of mineralized tissues and collagen network. Considering the mineralized tissues, polyalkanoic acid when attacking the tooth structure will result in displacement of phosphate ions from the abatite crystals okay by its carboxyl group each phosphate ions will take a calcium ion okay to retain its electric equilibrium this calcium ion from your uh, glass ionomer cement that's why its bonding with the mineralized tissues is via a chemical bonding okay is achieved now by calcium phosphate polyalkinoate alkinoate alkinoate sorry alkinoate crystalline structure okay from where it is derived okay ionization of phosphate from uh, the apatite structure okay by the effect of uh, polyalkinoic acid leads to its displacement which will bind to calcium ions to retain its electric equilibrium okay Bonding to the collagen is by hydrogen ions bonding or metallic ion bridging between carboxyl groups and the collagen of the tooth. This is the explanation or chemical explanation to the bond of glass ionomer cement with the tooth structure. Regarding the shrinkage stresses of the material, okay, minimal shrinkage stresses about 2 megapascal compared to 17 to 18 megapascal of that of uh, composite resin. This may be due to the material stay in the gel phase for at least 24 hours before maturation and this rubbery stage allows the cement to flow at the free surface 
okay also hygroscopic expansion due to water absorption counteract the setting shrinkage considering the wear okay this is the worst property of our material still its wear resistance is very low compared to other restorative material okay uh, after especially after placement due to low initial strength okay but it may be improved by time but didn't reach acceptable range this is a clinical picture of uh, a glass anomal cement in occlusal uh, cavity okay after two years also this is a scanning electron micrograph showing different <coughs> stages of wear of the material okay at different aging interval let us discuss something important in the properties of glass ionomer cement which is the fluoride release and uptake because it is not only releasing fluoride it also acts as a fluoride reservoir as we mentioned before fluoride is used to decrease the fusion temperature of glass ionomer improves the handling properties of the mixed cement increases strength and translucency fluoride release takes two cycles okay the first cycle is a short-term release which is the responsibility of the fluoride contents that occurs during gelation and maturation of material okay it's a high ion fluoride releasing during both setting maturation okay and takes place in the first few days okay again it is the responsibility of the total fluoride contents of the compositional uh, contents of the powder but not only this amount of fluoride is released but also a longer term fluoride release takes place although it is a low amount that releases throughout the cement uh, life okay as a result of equilibrium diffusion process okay this is due to the sodium ions that is ionized and didn't share in the skeleton ionized during setting reaction and didn't share in the skeleton of your final glass ionomer cement to gain equilibrium it binds to any fluoride from the outer environment which is the oral cavity okay when the oral cavity uh, is subjected to have uh, any any alteration of the environment like that bad oral hygiene or the patient didn't care about maintaining uh, prophylactic measures okay then uh, the saliva will be acidic and sodium will lose fluoride and it will emit fluoride although it is a very low one okay until the condition improved then again sodium will attack another fluoride and this is will be the cycle then the short term fluoride release within the few days of setting okay and this is a brust of fluoride this is a huge amount of fluoride and this is the responsibility of fluoride contents of glass ionomer. While the continuous release or the long term fluoride uptake and intake, okay, is the responsibility of sodium ions, not the fluoride ions. This diagram showing you how the fluoride released, okay, which is released as a great amount uh, after uh, or during the setting time and the maturation from original placement okay then due to sodium ions it will go for uh, uptake and intake of fluoride this is another diagram discussing this okay let us statistically discuss it in this uh, graph okay this are the amount of fluoride within the 24 hour it was the maximum fluoride amount and the start to decrease within three to six months okay and this is the short term then it becomes stable okay then the fluoride ions due to topical fluoride application either using toothpaste with fluoride content high fluoride content or any mean of topical fluoride content fluoride will uh, increase in its amount this is an uptake of fluoride and it will be released again if the condition become unfavorable okay and becomes at lower level then the cycle repeated again okay when you are topically applied flu applied fluoride that's why glass anomer is considered as a fluoride reservoir considering the obesity of the material okay it's considered as g 
create major shortcoming of the material that limits its use, okay? But now resin modified glycerinomer and nanofilled glycerinomer is considered as a modification to improve the translucency and reduce opacity. Still, the strength properties, uh, it is considered as brittle and weak, lack of rigidity, which is affected by the powder liquid ratio. Material is radio opaque, and as we said before, this is a must requirement of any restorative material, okay? This is due to incorporation of radio opacifiers like lanthanium, strontium, and barium in the bulk. What are the types of glass anomaly? Either we have classify it according to compositional form or according to chemistry or according to clinical use. Let us discuss the classification according to compositional form. We have three compositional forms, which is the polyacid mixable that we discussed uh, within our uh, lecture now. Okay, it's a polyacid material uh, represented in an aqueous solution. Okay. Uh, it comes in powder and liquid, but the problem is your liquid tends to gel by time, okay, and decrease its viscosity and reactivity, okay. That's why they developed what is called water mixable. What is water mixable? The, it's a trial to uh, decrease the gelation or prevent gelation of the liquid. The liquid comes in a freeze-dried form and it becomes a powder, which is added to the original powder. But due to lack of water, okay, and the media is not acidic, it will not react unless you add a distilled water to it. Okay, that's why it is called water mixable. Okay, it becomes, uh, it comes to you in uh, a powder form with an empty dropper. This empty dropper, okay, you fill it with distilled water. You just add a drop of water that will liquefy the liquid again. Okay, and uh, provides aqueous media required for reaction, okay, and uh, then facilitating the acid attack, gelation, and maturation of the material. Okay, the problem is sometimes you fail to adjust the amount of water required, okay, and maybe the water is is extra than required, okay, and the material will get a low properties. Okay, this is. The problem in such a condition, okay? Again, water mixable is a trial to decrease or to prevent self-gelation of liquid. That's why the liquid is freeze-dried to be in a form of uh, powder, typically the same as powdered milk of babies, okay? Powdered milk is freeze-dried to be in a form of powder. Then you will uh, reshape it in a form of liquid by adding water, okay? But the same as it is if you add uh, too much water, okay, then the properties of your milk will become uh, very low. Typically the same if you add too much water, okay, you should control the amount of water to get up uh, the best properties of the material. Then come a mixed cement, part of the liquid is freeze dried and the other part, okay, comes to you in a dropper bottle, okay, with the required amount of water to in a trial to control so then classification according to chemistry according to chemistry you have four types of glass anomer conventional glass anomer which we discussed uh, now okay we already finished its discussion it's our main uh, topic today is a conventional one then resin modifier poly uh, modified then polyacid modified composite or combomere and what is called geomer okay Conventional glass aromer, which is acid-based reaction and sensitive to hydration and dehydration, have a short working time and extended setting time uh, because its maturation takes uh, at least 24 hours while you, you should work in the gelation phase or before completing the gelation phase for a few minutes, okay, after mixing. Should be sealed, sealed against moisture contamination, should not be finished immediately. Uh, special forms are created by metal reinforced and we have six subtypes uh, of it including glass anomer for direct restoration, metal reinforced glass anomer, highly viscous, low viscous glass anomer, glass anomer liner and base and two things. <coughs> Sorry. Glass anomer conventional type for direct restoration. It is used for 
pedodontic uh, restorations, okay, uh, and for class 3 and the class 5 in certain cases. It is not recommended for permanent filling as uh, it's low wear resistance and low strength properties, okay, of the material. Uh, in a trial to reinforce it, okay, uh, uh, the powder contains silver alloy, okay, and may be centered with silver and the cold ceramic cement, okay. Uh, these materials are no more to colored by adding silver, okay, and mainly it is recommended as a core build-up, especially it has a different color than that of the two structure, and you could note uh, where is the end of your core and where is the end of your two structure and where to place your finishing line. Then, highly viscous glass elomer uh, is developed, okay, and is designed as an alternative to amalgam <coughs> as a posterior restoration, but actually it is used for atraumatic restorative treatment, which includes excavation of carious lesion, okay, with hand instrument, and restoration immediately without cutting a prepared cavity with rotary instrument with this material, which is a highly viscous glass anomer. It's a condensable one, uh, with the advantages of being adhesive to the two structure and fluorine fluoride releasing. Then comes a low viscosity glass anomer. The viscosity is the role of powder uh, size, okay, powder particle size, and at the same time powder liquid ratio, okay. The low viscosity cement have been developed as a liner or a fissure sealant, okay, uh, or to seal cervical areas and for endodontic treatment also. Then comes Glass anomer uh, liner and base developed to be a base material under restorations, especially under uh, composite resin as a sandwich technique. Glass anomer looting cement with the advantage of being uh, fluoride releasing and adhesive to the two structure. It is a material of choice for cementing metal uh, uh, indirect restoration, metallic indirect restorations of inlays and the crowns and bridges. Okay, uh, this is. A brief description of the conventional glass anomer cement. Okay, this comes the powder, which at, uh, attacked by the liquid, and the acid attack starts for a few minutes. Then gelation will take 24 hours. Okay, and final maturation after 24 hours up to one year. Okay, this is considered as a few minutes of working time, just at the, uh, the, uh, the early few seconds of gelation you should stop backing the material okay then comes <coughs> the gelation and the maturation at this time you should protect the material with varnish until it is completely matured within 24 hours you could finish and polish the material and all of these are termed acid based reaction then a trial to decrease the moisture sensitivity of the material and at the same time uh, in a trial to finish the material immediately okay uh, resin modified glass anomer was developed by adding a resinous uh, water soluble monomer which is hydroxyethyl methacrylate into the aqueous solution of the poly acid okay then the reaction uh, of glass anomer will be two basic reactions the first one is a resin based reaction to allow polymerization of your resonance fracture that will act as a barrier or form a barrier that will prevent hydration and dehydration, okay? And you could finish the material immediately and your resin fraction is considered as a special coating inside the material that will protect it from moisture exposure or moisture contamination. And then the resin-based reaction which takes place okay within the first 24 hours until maturation which is a common one this provides the following advantage which is decrease the moisture sensitivity and no need to provide waterproof seal and ability to immediate finishing it comes as a restorative uh, component which have uh, four major improvements in comparison to conventional GIC which is a decreased water sensitivity, improved the mechanical properties, improved the handling and the manipulation, and improved translucency. Also, it is the material of a choice to be used as a liner and base because it's a quick set by photopolymerization, especially under uh, 
composite resin restoration. It is the material of choice for fissure protection or fissure, fissure sealant, especially the conventional one, although it has a higher fluoride release, okay, than the resin modified uh, glass enamel, but it is washed away or its solubility and its weak mechanical properties compared to resin modified glass enamel uh, is not favorable as a fissure sealant when compared to resin modified glass enamel. Also, it could be used as a loading cement, okay, especially uh, with uh, non-metallic restorations, okay. Uh, this is the schematic diagram showing, number one, the acid attack within a few minutes, okay. Still, there is acid-based reaction, okay. Then, gelation. At any time, of the start of the gelation, you are exposing your restoration into all your material to light curing, then the resin-based reaction will take place within 20 to 40 seconds, which is constitutes the exposure time to light, okay, and the material will harden at this time. At the same time, still your acid-based reaction is working backstage, okay, until complete maturation of the material. Then your material, will have a resin-based reaction, okay, and an acid-based reaction. Resin-based reaction immediately with command setting using light cure for 20 to 40 seconds, allowing you to immediately finish and polish your material, and at the same time, you have a self-protective layer against uh, moisture uh, contamination, okay, while it will continue to mature by acid-based reaction. This is the working time and the placement, okay? And no need for varnish protection. You will go for immediate finishing, okay? This is the acid-based reaction and this is the resin-based reaction. Then comes an idea to make an intermediate material, okay, with intermediate properties between composite and glass enamel. It is a polyacid modified composite or which is called as compound. Compomere is basically similar uh, nature and physical properties to composite, okay? It's a fluoride-releasing composite by adding fluoroaluminosilicate glass powder as a filler with freeze-dried liquid, okay? Then it is a composite with glass enamel uh, as uh, a filler inside it, okay? It doesn't contain water at all. It doesn't self-adhere uh, to the two structure. Okay, its fluoride release is questionable. Acid-based reaction may take place if it is exposed to water, okay, and your saliva becomes acidic, okay. Uh, it is not considered as a true, a true glass enamel because it didn't start uh, with acid-based reaction because actually it didn't contain water, which is the media for your reaction. That's why it is not considered as a true glass enamel. It is classified as composite rather than glass enamel. It is supplied only in a restorative form, okay, um, and it is not adhesive, okay, it requires a separate bonding agent, bonding procedure, and its fluoride releasing is questionable, okay, as uh, it may undergo or may not undergo uh, acid-based reaction. This is the material compromer with unlimited working time as being light curing material, the basic reaction is the resin-based, not acid-based reaction, okay? Then the material could be finished immediately, okay? But if the oral hygiene becomes uh, worse, okay, and saliva becomes acidic and comes in contact with your material, acid-based reaction may take place. Then finally comes the geomer. Geomer is a resin-based material that contains pre-reacted glass enamel particles incorporated into the resin. It is actually a resin-modified glass enamel cement with a filler of pre-cured glass enamel material, okay? Uh, it is a light-activated one, okay, requiring the use of bonding procedure, separate bonding procedure, and available clinically as a restorative material only. Again, also, uh, it is classified as uh, glass enamel, true glass enamel, okay, but actually it's fluoride releasing 
is limited, okay, and the questionable also uh, bonding with the two structure is limited, okay. Then we could conclude that conventional glass anomer with six forms, resin modified glass anomer four forms, combomer and geomer are one form only restorative material. This is the classification of glass anomer according to its chemistry. If we would like to discuss the fluoride release and other properties starting from conventional glass anomer followed by resin modified geomer combomeres composite resin you could note that the fluoride releasing is higher at conventional uh, glass anomer and when you go down it becomes less okay fluoride uh, recharging and water contents uh, is higher at conventional glass anomer reaching the minimal or no at composite resin also when you are discussing compressive strength properties, fracture toughness, and aesthetic, composite resin is the best, okay, and it is declined when you going up for conventional glass anomer. Finally, classification of glass anomer for clinical use, okay, we have three types. Type 1 is a looting cement, type 2 is a restorative one, either aesthetic, uh, like resin modified glass anomer, or reinforced using Sermet or silver sermet cement, okay, and finally liner and paste. Okay, the difference between these types are within uh, the particle size of your cement and at the same time the powder liquid ratio used for cementation. We could conclude the advantages of glass anomer as karyostatic material due to sustained release of fluoride, adhesive potential, low setting contraction, biocompatible as a result of using weak acid and high molecular weight, thermal insulating capacity, low coefficient of thermal expansion, satisfactory optical properties when firstly placed, okay, multiple clinical application, ease of manipulation, and reasonable cost. But it has poor mechanical properties, especially wear resistance of the material that limits its use, hydration and dehydration of conventional types, short working time, and long setting time as it takes about 24 hours at least for maturation. Indications of the material in cases of class 5 carious erosive or abrasive lesion, class 3 carious lesion, all of them are areas of non stress uh, or areas not subjected to stresses, to direct stresses, bits and fissure sealants, especially resin modified 1, class 1 and 2 restorations in primary dentition, looting cement, liner under composite. Uh, or to block out uh, undercuts for indirect to scalar restoration, root surface caries, and core buildup. This is class 5 restored with uh, glass anomer. Okay, Th this is a class 5 caries lesion. This is a class 5 erosive lesion. Okay, and this is another class 5 abrasive lesion. Okay, class 3. Bits and fissure sealant, deciduous teeth, class 1 and 2, the used one was metal reinforced, cementation, especially with patient, in patients with high care susceptibility, using it in sandwich technique, which is called also a double laminate technique or bilayer technique, okay, it's first described by McLean and Wilson. In 1977, okay, clinically employed when restoring large cavities, okay, to reduce the amount of composite, it is either open sandwich, okay, or closed sandwich. Open sandwich when restoring a proximal box, firstly filled with glass anomer and they elevate the deep subgingival margin, okay, then covered by glass anomer. Or closed sandwich when you use that at uh, only to cover the bulbar floor and the axial wall while composite resin is completely covering uh, the glass anomer cement and this is the case already I showed it to you before okay of the margin elevation okay you could note that in the spite wing radiograph the carious lesion is deep subgingival the margin uh, of the gingival margin of the restoration <coughs> is elevated using resin modified glass anomer then we applied uh, the composite resin this is an open sandwich technique closed sandwich technique also I showed you this photograph before 
اوكي ذن روت سيرفيس ريستوريشن كور بيلد اب ايزر ريزن موديفايد اور سيلفر ري انفورسد جلاس ايونومر ذا ماتيريال از كونترا انديكيتد دو تو اتس لو تنسايد سترينث اند بريتلنس ان بيرمننت كلاس 1 اند كلاس 2 اوكي متر ري انفورسد جلاس ايونومر ماي هاف امبروفد وير ريزيستنس اند سترينث بروبرتيز بات ستيل ان ادوكيت تو بي يوزد ان ارياز اوف هاي استريسز Let us discuss the cavity preparation. Cavity preparation for glass ionomer has no specification, especially the material is uh, an adhesive material which bond with the tooth structure and have karyostatic property due to fluoride release. That's why there is no specific criteria or features uh, or instructions to follow when uh, restoring the teeth with glass ionomer cement. Just excavate and remove the carious lesion, okay, and apply your material. Sometimes we apply calcium hydroxide liners in areas very deep with the shadow of the bulb appears underneath as a pale paint shadow, okay, or when the dentine bridge is less than 0.5 millimeter and this shadow appears to you, okay. Manipulation, it's a very easy one, including dispensing and mixing, okay, Your material comes either in a capsule or powder and liquid. Capsule for mechanical mixing provides a consistent and satisfactory powder-liquid ratio and ensures optimal uh, physical properties. Or powder and liquid, okay, supplied separately for hand mixing, and the ratio of powder to liquid is significant and plays a major uh, factor in the success of your restoration. For convenience, the mixed material could be transferred into a disposable special syringe which is called Centrix syringe for accurate and positive placement of the material. This is the capsules with the special applicator, okay, and a special compressor uh, to press the liquid to the uh, powder, okay. This is the powder and liquid form, and you could note the capsules, red one, okay, or the syringe, Centrix syringe, that it will be filled with the mixed material. Then placement, first of all, you should condition the cavity with a special conditioner, which is uh, 10 to 15 percent of polyacrylic acid applied for 10 to 15 seconds, just to condition your cavity, okay, to receive and to enhance bonding with the tooth structure, which is then washed and dried before application of glass ionomer material, okay. If it is Uh, contaminated with saliva, then re-etch again or recondition again with this special uh, conditioner. Then the material is applied to the cavity, okay, using the centrix type syringe if it is hand mixed one, okay. Fill the cavity and apply your uh, matrix, okay, just to press it inside the cavity, especially if it is for class uh, five restoration. After a uh, few minutes or few seconds just remove gently your matrix trim the excess okay of cement with sharp bladed instrument okay or mild steel bear but i didn't prefer to use a bear at all okay uh, the bear should be directed from the periphery to the center okay just to the periphery at the periphery of the restoration it is not recommended to touch your your glass enamel cement and apply uh, the sealant okay Uh, this sealant either come with your cat or use varnish or use bonding agent it may be light activated or it may be uh, self activated okay excess sealant is removed after 24 hours okay just to make sure that the material reaches uh, its maximum maturation okay contouring and polishing of the material could be performed which is uh, regular finishing techniques Uh, similar to that of uh, composite resin, but resin modified glass ionomer could be contoured and finished immediately. Let us review uh, case reports. This is case number one. Okay, it's an erosive lesion. Uh, the matrix was dried. Okay, the tooth is polished. Okay, and then conditioned with polyacrylic acid. Application of the material followed by application of the matrix. Leave it until <coughs> it starts relation and remove 
your matrix for proper contouring after 24 hours the case is finished and the contours are adjusted another case okay is a case of restoration of root caries <coughs> or deep cervical caries okay tissue retraction code is applied the caries is excavated bonding with or conditioning with polyacrylic acid conditioner placement of the material just remove the excess okay light curing the sealant okay and this is the final restoration okay before and after finally those are the basic textbooks i used in preparing this presentation those are the articles i used in preparing uh, my presentation Finally, as you know, your questions are welcomed at any time. You could send me your question by commenting to this video or mailing me by email and I will reply to you as soon as possible. This is my contact info. Finally, I would like to thank you for assigning this uh, time, which is precious to you, uh, to listen to me. I hope, I hope you benefit from this lecture. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel youtube channel activate the notification to get all uh, the new uh, episodes of uh, optive density thank you yes